One of the most powerful things you can do with object-oriented programming is to use something called inheritance. This can save you from writing a ton of code. You really want to pay attention because it's a very powerful feature that can really take your programming to the next level. Take a look at this class that I've got up on the screen. I've simplified it, but it's the type of class you might use in a game where we've got boats going around the screen. I've got attributes, and remember, attributes are always done first. How much it weighs, the name of the boat, and if it's docked or if it's not docked. Pretty typical type of attributes, and I've got two different methods in here. The boat can either dock or undock. Makes sense. If I tell the boat to dock when it's already docked, it goes ahead and prints out an error message. Otherwise, it sets docked to true and prints out that it's docking. If I undock, it'll give me an error if I'm not docked, or it will go ahead and set is docked to true and print out undocking. This will allow me to have several different boats and I can keep track if they're docked or not docked. And there are a lot of other things I could add to it, but we want to keep this simple for this particular demonstration. Okay, I've got the boat. I can create different boats. Okay, thanks to the magic of editing, I've quickly put in two instances of the boat class, Enterprise 2, Enterprise 3. Enterprise 2 was built back around 1776 and was 25 tons. And on 1812, the Enterprise 3 was built and was about 135 tons. This is really useful, but if I wanted to take this boat class, and I didn't just want boats, but if I also wanted submarines, how would I manage to add submarines to the boat class? Because submarines can do more than just dock and undock. Let's say I also wanted to keep track if the submarine has submerged or not submerged. Well, I've got a couple different choices here. I could just add submerge to my boat class and then use boat classes for both submarines and for boats. It's not ideal though because really boats shouldn't submerge and surface quite like submarines do. Usually when a boat submerges, it stays submerged and it means something entirely different with a boat than a submarine. Therefore, I don't really want to put submerged, not submerged into a boat class. This isn't the best way of doing it. The other thing that I could do, I could copy this boat class. I could paste it down here. And you can see I've got boat and submarine. And now I could take the boat class that I had, keep it the way it was, and then go in down here and start adding the definition for submerge onto the submarine, and it will not affect the boat class. This is another possible solution, but it's not great either. What if I wanted to come up here and I wanted to change the wording on docked, if I want to do something else, if I want to add in graphics for docking, undocking, that type of thing? If I add them to boat, I'm not going to add them to submarine unless I copy paste back and forth. And if I have several different types of things that are related to boats but not quite boats, like if I had boats, submarines, sailboats, power boats, that type of thing that had different functionality, I'd need to go through and do that same copy paste on every single different, different type of boat that I copied from that boat class. That's not a great situation. I don't want a lot of copy pasting. If I change something in one place, I don't want to have to go through and try to change it in other places as well. It's no good. Therefore, how do I fix this? Well, we can fix this by doing something called inheritance. And if I do the following, in between these parentheses for submarine, if I type boat, the neat thing is that at this point in time, everything that's in the boat class is now automatically picked up by the submarine class. If I change anything in the boat class, it'll automatically be changed for the submarine class. All I need to do is add to the submarine what I want to have happen extra.
Now in this case, because I've told it that boat has been derived from submarine right here, then I've got this, this, and this all automatically pulled into the submarine class and in addition to that I've also got a submerge function. Very useful. This is called inheritance because I'm inheriting all of the boat attributes into submarine. This is called the parent class this is called the child class. When you think of these different classes, the parent should be a generalized version of whatever the child class is. In other words, the child class is more specific and the parent class is more general. The one way of testing to make sure that you've got inheritance set up correctly is to do the is a test. In this case I can say I can say a submarine is a boat but a boat is not always a submarine. A sailboat would be a decent child class because you could say a sailboat is a boat but you can't really say a boat is a sailboat. Likewise, a dolphin is a mammal, meaning that the dolphin can be the child class and this can be the parent class. We don't want to do something like having a stove inherit from a kitchen. This is a different type of relationship. A stove is not a kitchen. This does not work. A stove has a kitchen, which is entirely different, but a kitchen is not a stove. You don't want to use inheritance in this case. The real test is a, if you can successfully put that in a sentence for your particular type of classes, then the inheritance is probably the right choice to do. In order to understand the differences between the different classes and how they relate, we often make a class diagram. And in its simplest form, we'll do a rectangle for each class, the child classes are set below, and they point to the parent class, usually with an empty arrowhead like this. So this could be a sailboat. There you go. This will allow us to figure out, oh I've got a boat class, I've got a submarine child class, and a sailboat subclass, and I know that anything in the boat is automatically going to be inherited by those two child classes. That's a class diagram, and it is one of the many types of diagrams in a standard called UML. If you ever go on job searches or look around, you'll often find references to Unified Modeling Language, UML. And this is what they're talking about. Can you draw pretty charts like this?